Incorporated. Your fault, Mr. Landon. Thanks. A very warm sort of homecoming. So many thousands of people down at the pier to kiss me ashore, I couldn't find my own husband. He's quite preoccupied these days, Krista. The market's in a bad way. Be sure to be with him on Judgment Day, Vic. He'll need you to plead his case. Fine to see you back, Mr. Landon. We missed you. Thanks. It's fine to be welcome. I'll wait in my office till Mr. Vendig is free. Let me know, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. McDonald, how are you, sir? Rather tired. Are you in town for another flying visit, Mr. Landon? Yes, I got in late last night. I'm going to pull out again after I've had a few talks with Horace. I've spoken to him on the phone, but I haven't seen the old pirate in months. How is he? A pirate? Oh, I'm very serious, Mr. Landon. I've been sitting here for four days, waiting to see him. I think your partner is making me walk the plank. Four days? And for ten days prior to that, I called him repeatedly. He was either out or too busy to speak to me. Oh, there must be some mistake. Are you aware this is Mr. MacDonald of Montgomery Trust? Why wasn't he shown in to Mr. Vendig? I'm sorry, Mr. Landon. Mr. Vendig is extremely busy. He gave strict orders that... What's your trouble? What do you want to see him about? My bank needs a loan. Five million or our depositors are wiped out. That bad? It's very simple. Too much of our resources were Dorchester stock, sold to us before this panic, as part of Vendig's carefully prepared short-selling campaign. But he wouldn't do that, not to you. We can't even discuss that point. He's already done it. That's all my fault. I'm personally responsible for what's happened to us. I allowed my friendship toward him to blind me to his peculiar ethical code. Well, he'll see you now, or you're going to witness a head-on collision. Tell Mr. Vendig I've arrived. Yes? Mr. Landon has arrived, sir. He wants to see you. Just a moment. Do you wish to carry this on in Vic's presence, or had you rather keep it private? Tell him to come in in just about half a minute. Yes, sir. You've already told this to Vic. I could see it in his face. As a matter of fact, I haven't told him a word. Now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yes. You were in Paris. That boy in Paris was nothing but a protege. He paints divinely. <laughs> I thought of a very pretty speech of your own in which you said people with no creative talent ought to help those who have it. <laughs> Krista, are you trying to appeal to my sense of humor? No, you never had one. I asked you to come here because I don't intend for you to go back to the house. Everything that belongs to you is ready and waiting. As soon as you've checked into a hotel, let me know and I'll tell my lawyers where they may serve you. And with that, may I consider myself dismissed? If you care to put it that way. Oh, and without even the customary two weeks' notice. Don't try sarcasm on me, Krista. I might pull out your Paris record. How did you expect me to behave? Like a woman who had a husband she loved and respected? Have you given me a better life than I had with Buck Mansfield? I left him because I needed you. Isn't it logical that I should leave you for the same reason? Quite. And you have. What have you given me in the five years we've been married? From the first moment you weren't kissing me, you were kissing 48% of Delta Bond and Cher. Vic, just as a matter of curiosity, and because I happen to like you, what do you think about our divorce? I'm sorry it had to happen. <laughs> and you never said a word about it. Not even to Vic. You just had to lie about it, didn't you, darling? Poor thing. Can't help it. What was the idea? 
idea. Why tell her how many people know the story? Yes, I suppose you're right. Well, if she trapped me so easily, I feel like a fool. Was it very unpleasant? Naturally. Don't you think I have any feeling? I often wonder. Hostess, when does MacDonald have to wait outside for four days? MacDonald? Now, wait a minute. Don't say his name as though it were something holy. He's a businessman who wants a tremendous loan. Which we can very well afford to give him. Not without collateral. Collateral? That's why I don't want to see him. What's the point? Hoss, I don't understand you. Everything in this office, almost every good thing in your life, was made possible by MacDonald's faith in you. In you personally. It wasn't based on collateral. He didn't ask for anything but your word. He made Bendig Incorporated. Oh, no. I did. No, it was MacDonald and Montgomery Trust. You went to him for help a dozen times, and each time he gave it to you, freely, without question, without collateral. Now he's come to you. Vic, why don't you stick to building bridges? The man wants $5 million, very well secured. His bank is basically sound unless he goes under. If he does, you take with him every small depositor on their books. Hoss, I don't know what you've got against him, but think of those people. I will when I retire. In the meantime, I'm thinking only of myself. All right. I won't talk to you as a friend, but as a partner. A silent one, Vic. Hoss, don't joke while MacDonald is suffering out there. It's vicious. What are you made of, anyway? I'm an adding machine. And as a result, you're so rich you can afford a conscience. Well, I'm not that rich. I still need a lot more. My job is to protect my interests and yours. Thank you. 